human health and disease in that chapter we have the topic of cancer the silent killer disease which is spreading at a very fast rate now to talk about cancer in this particular presentation i'll be talking about uh, what is cancer what causes cancer what are the symptoms certain symptoms we will uh, discuss how to detect and also some of the steps how it can be cured or treated so to begin with first we have to understand what is cancer now we all are familiar that the different tissues and organs arise after mitotic divisions when a particular cell divides into two two then four four to eight it goes on dividing and ultimately the tissues and then the organs organ systems are formed which goes on in a very controlled manner the division goes on in a very controlled manner and the organs and everything goes on quite normally but sometimes it can happen sometimes it can happen that there is some uncontrolled division the cells which were dividing in a very controlled organized manner becomes unorganized the division process becomes unorganized uncontrolled the cells start dividing increasing in number in an uncontrolled manner without any definite uh, uh, direction that proliferation of cells is known as cancer and the mass of cells that will be formed due to that uncontrolled division is referred to as tumor so those repeated divisions will result in the formation of tumors as you can see here the picture that has been kept here these are the these violet colored cells these are the normal cells these are the normal cells which divided in a very organized manner to form the particular organ or the tissue structure now what happens some of them they start dividing in an uncontrolled manner uncontrolled manner as you can see the difference actually this is a is the part of the same tissue or organ but here suddenly these patch of tissue they start dividing in an uncontrolled manner so what happens a tumor starts forming a tumor a sort of bulge a, a sort of outgrowth starts forming due to it and those we will call as the cancer cells so here as it further grows you can see in the second picture as it further grows what happens it will proliferate now it cannot remain within that space so definitely it will go to invade the surrounding tissues it will go to invade the surrounding tissues where it is not supposed to be penetrating those that such growths are known as tumors now why does it happen so why does it happen so why what is the reason main reason behind it all cells when they are dividing they have a property which is known as contact inhibition property now what is contact inhibition property contact inhibition property means the cells all the cells after dividing before dividing they are in contact with each other they are in very close contact with each other as they are in close contact with each other that uncontrolled division is stopped it is stopped that is known as contact inhibition property due to contact between the cells cell to cell adhesion as you can see here contact between the cells so what happens that uh, the uncontrolled division is stopped due to the adhesion of course here some chemicals play an important role which is little beyond the scope of our discussion presently some chemicals are released due to the adhesion of the cells that will prevent the uncontrolled division that will go on in a very organized manner the division now what happens sometimes the cells lose this property they simply lose this property due to wrong signaling or due to mutation that is the chemical which i mentioned that is e catherine now what happens that gets lost due to mutation of some genes that gets lost resultant that contact inhibition property is lost that property itself goes missing as a result the cell they go on dividing that disrupted cell to cell adhesion that a gap cr is created between the cell so that adhesion is lost that attachment is lost which will result into 
proliferation in a very uncontrolled, unorganized manner in the cells, finally resulting in the formation of tumors. Now here, one more slide I've kept, picture I've kept here to make you understand. This is the normal cell, cell divides, healthy tissue. So this way it is going on in a very normal manner. Now abnormally, because the cells have lost the property of contact inhibition, so what happens? It was a normal cell, some genetic changes occurred. So what happened? They lost the property and they divided, but they have they do not have that contact inhibition property. So what will happen? The division goes on in a very uncontrolled manner, which was supposed to develop in the, as in the first picture. It develops in this manner. That we call as tumor, formation of tumor. Now, sometimes what can happen? The cells can pass out from the tumor to new sites to form secondary tumors. Now, at a particular region, let us say the lungs, okay, let us say the lungs, the tumor started forming initially. Now, sometimes what happens, lungs, it's a very soft tissue. So, what will happen, some of the cells, the cancerous cells, they start uh, uh, getting removed. They start getting detached from that original tumor, some of the cells, and they move into the bloodstream, into the circulatory fluid, and then they are carried over to some other organs where they get attached to some tissue and again start division there. So what happens? That will be called as the secondary tumor. And this moving out of cells, tum uh, cancerous cells, from one location to another location through the blood, generally through the blood, is known as metastasis. That is called as metastasis. Now here... A picture has been kept here. Now, initially, the primary cancer had developed here in the in the intestine. Okay, it had developed in the intestine. Now, what happened in the intestine? It developed, but some of the cells they moved out, they got sludged off, they got separated out, and then it starts spreading. That is known as metastasis. Okay, it's called as metastasis. Some of the cells they went, and what happened? The blood it carried, and then they got attached to the liver. Here they again start proliferating. Some of the cells moved and to the lungs. So in the lungs they started proliferating. This is how cancer spreads to other parts of the body. So here it's an enlarged picture here. The primary cancer had developed here. It moved through the blood. Cancerous cells. It's getting washed off or it is getting carried away. Some of the cells, few, one, two, three cells will also do it. So they will move through the bloodstream and then all through the, even through the lymph system, any circulatory fluid. And then again, it goes and uh, lodges itself in some other organ where it will again start dividing. That will be called as the secondary tumor. Now, tumors can again be of two types, benign and malignant. Now, benign tumors are the ones which usually remain localized at one region, the primary region. It will not move out from that location. That is benign. And if Malignant are the ones which are likely to be uh, uh, broken down and then carried over to other regions, which will get spread. It will spread out. So the first picture that we have kept here, I have kept here, that is of benign tumor. So here, the black cells that are shown, these are the tumorous, these, these are the cancerous cells. So here it is localized. They do not usually invade other tissues, that is benign tumor. Malignant are the ones here, as you can see, malignant are the ones which usually happens in the soft tissues of a body. They will spread. They do not remain localized to a region. They will spread out. They will spread out. They get sludged off and then they may carry it away to other parts like here as we saw. So it may result into metastasis. So metastasis is the uh, carrying away of the cancerous cells to other parts of the body. And usually it happens with malignant tumors, not with benign tumor. So some of the like differences we can say that benign tumors, they do not show metastasis, it, hence it is also known as non-invasive, these benign ones, whereas malignant ones, they show metastasis and they invade other body parts. Then benign tumor, one more thing, it might stop its growth after reaching a certain size. 
so it's not very dangerous that way but malignant they will show indefinite growth they will show indefinite growth they will continue growing then uh, benign tumors are less fatal whereas malignant ones are more fatal because of its ability to uh, exhibit metastasis now what are the main causes of cancer the main causes of cancer carcinogens carcinogens are the main causes of cancer the carcinogens which can be chemical which can be physical or biological so what are carcinogens these are cancer causing agents they can be chemical chemical like say aniline dyes some benzopiprene then chemicals in cigarette smoke tobacco smoke so even some dio sprays so all these chemicals they can cause cancer if inhaled or somehow they can cause mutation in the body in the cells that will result into unlimited growth physical agents include usually ionizing radiations like x rays gamma rays or non ionizing radiations like uv rays so when we are exposed to some radiations we are likely to be uh, that our cells are likely to be mutated and they can undergo uh, unlimited proliferation biological causes are usually due to some oncogenic viruses okay some viruses which can alter the genes which are controlling the unlimited division so such viruses can be the biological carcinogens those are known as oncogenic viruses so these are the primary causes of cancer now we come to what is cellular oncogenes cellular oncogenes also abbreviated as c o n c or proto oncogenes what are these these are the genes present inside the cells which okay which transform to cancer causing oncogenes okay so these are the genes actually which are responsible for preventing the unlimited growth of cells the cells they have the inherent property of division undergoing mitosis now mitosis cannot be allowed to go on indefinitely in the body so the body has its own regulatory me mechanism the gene which will stop division after a certain period of time or when it is not required in the body and that is controlled by some genes specific genes which we call as oncogenes that is controlled now due to mutation which might which might occur the agents can be any of these what happens they will stimulate those cellular oncogenes which was preventing or which were preventing the cells from undergoing division they will stimulate those cells to start with division again as we can see here in this picture this is a normal cell okay here the dna has been shown normal genes regulate cell growth so the normal genes the cellular oncogenes they are regulating the cell growth they will not allow that indefinite uh, growth unless and until required by the body there's a demand in the body they will not they will control but sometimes what happens when we get exposed to these carcinogens we are likely that the genes will mutate they will change and then oncogenes accelerate cell growth and division they start malfunctioning the genes start malfunctioning and then they again stimulate the cell to divide when it is mutated or damaged so they will again be stimulated to start with division the cell starts division the cell goes on dividing that results into the tumor or cancer <clears throat> there are different types of cancer depending upon the tissue where it is occurring organ where it is occurring we have different types carcinoma which occurs in the epithelial tissues epithelial tissues like say skin cancer melanoma melanocytes of the skin okay it, the melanocytes of the skin are in fact uh, like are affected that type of cancer is known as melanoma sarco sarcoma that is in the mesodermal tissue in the mesodermal tissue that is below the epithelial layers when it occurs we will call such type of cancer as sarcoma then leukemia and lymphoma when it in when it happens in the 
blood cells. If the blood cells they are undergoing proliferated divisions, then we will call them as leukemia or lymphoma. Now, how are how is cancer detected? If a person is showing certain signs and symptoms, now how to detect whether actually it is due to cancerous growth? The first type of detection or test is one type is there are different types of tests. One among them is blood and bone marrow test. Blood and bone marrow test. Now, in bone marrow test, what is done? The bone marrow, the bone marrow, as you can see here from the heap bone, okay, uh, biopsy needle is inserted. Needle is inserted into it, it through the bone, into the bone marrow, and some marrow cells are taken out. Marrow cells are taken out, and those are tested whether the uh, unlimited growth or uncontrolled growth is occurring in them. Likewise, the blood count can be taken uh, for to check the increased cell counts in case of leukemia. Usually, this is done in case of leukemia and lymphoma. Then the second type of test that is histopathological study and biopsy. In this, what is done in biopsy? A piece of the suspected tissue. Suppose an organ, say a part, uh, the throat. There is a, a doubt that maybe a cancer in the throat has, start, has started developing. Then a piece of that tissue is cut out. Is cut out. Of course, it is painful. That piece of the tissue is cut out and into thin sections. It is stained in the lab and then it is examined under the microscope. It is examined under the microscope whether it is dividing normally or it is dividing abnormally. That will determine whether cancerous growth is actually occurring or not. That is known as histopathological study. Histo means tissue. So pathological study and biopsy. Then the next type of test which can be done that is monoclonal antibodies. Now in monoclonal antibodies, what is done? Antibodies against cancer specific antigen. Okay. Antibodies against cancer specific antigens are used. That is when a cell has got transformed to become a cancerous cell, it starts releasing some proteins on the surface because it is dividing abnormally. Okay. So definitely some abnormal things will happen there. So some proteins are also released on its surface. So those type of, it is already predetermined. It is predetermined and we call them as antigen. Okay, they are not pathogens which has entered into the body but redeveloped by the cancerous cells. So what will happen? They will be, uh, their the, uh, the type, the pattern is noted down. Accordingly, antibodies are created. Those antibodies are inserted into the body and then it is checked if it binds or not. If those antibody binds with that antigen, with that cell, that means what? It shows that that is a cancerous cell. So this is in a simple way, in simple terms to explain what are monoclonal antibodies for detecting certain types of cancer. Then the next type of detection is through radiography. Now in radiography, it is x-rays. So it is a radiography machine. So x-rays are used to detect cancer of internal organs. Like say here, this is an x-ray, this is an x-ray film which has been taken. Okay, here it is showing, okay, of course it is not very clear out here, but here it is showing that a cancer has started developing in the lungs. In the lungs part, a cancer has started developing. Through x-rays also it can be detected. Then the next type of test, quite advanced, is computed tomography. Now, in computed tomography, this is the computer CT scan, what we call commonly a CT scan. So, this is the machine where it is done. The person is made to uh, enter into it, okay, enter into it and then x-ray, same. Principle remains the same, x-ray. In the radiography or the two-dimensional view, here what will happen? X-rays will give three-dimensional views, images of the internal organs, of our internal organs. So, here you can see this is okay the left and the right part so the left here an abnormal growth has been seen this is a three-dimensional st structure here an abnormal growth is seen so the right side there is no abnormal growth only in the left side so it shows the cancerous growth then the next type of detection which can be used detecting uh, instrument which can be used is resonance imaging so here in resonance imaging what is done 
<coughs> non ionizing here also the machine looks quite similar with ct scan machine okay here what is done the person is made to enter into it non ionizing radiation and strong magnetic field strong magnetic fields are used to detect pathological and physiological changes in the living tissue so whether some changes are occurring mri in short we call it as magnetic resonance imaging mri so magnetic fields are used here to detect the soft internal organs okay whether some changes have occurred so here you can see it this is a picture okay the report here where the abnormal growth is seen in this particular part of the brain so those were some of the uh, methods which is used to detect cancer now coming over to treatment how can cancer be treated different ways one is surgery in surgery what will be done if it is detected that a cancerous growth is occurring in an organ then through surgery that particular part will be cut off like say this is the abnormal tissue it will be cut off now care is taken that some additional tissue is also cut off why because one or two cells might remain one or two cells also which are which were undergoing abnormal growth if it remains back it will again start the cancerous growth so what is done the margin is usually like bigger the part which is cut off is bigger than the actual uh, tissue which was showing abnormal growth <coughs> so this is true surgery surgery will be followed by other types of treatment also which we will be talking now chemotherapy okay one method is chemotherapy now in chemotherapy cancerous cells are killed by several chemotherapeutic drugs okay that is medicines medicines are given okay they are usually they can be uh, orally or even injected into the body chemotherapy and then they uh, they are they will kill the cancerous cells here you can see this is the cancerous cell so after chemotherapy what pre prevents blood vessel growth okay will stop cell division replication process causes spontaneous cell death or sometimes it might kill the cell death that means the ways the principles different principles can be applied depending upon the medicine that is used creates a non dividing cell by altering the cell structure so chemotherapy treatment can involve different types of principles but basically what is it it is to either to inject a uh, inject a drug or orally also it can be given but of course it has lot of side effects then the next type of treatment is radiation therapy quite common okay we are very familiar with it in radiation therapy and, and irradiation of the tumor cells is done specifically the tumor cell is targeted and a very high a dose of radiation is uh, targeted at that particular uh, 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 organ where cancerous growth is taken taking place so that it will burn out the, those cells as also the surrounding cells thereby uh, do away with the cancerous growth then the next step is immunotherapy in this method okay in this method what is done some uh, biological modifiers like interferons are used which will activate the immune system and help in destroying the tumor <coughs> so here these are activated t cell natural killer cell macrophages genetically engineered t cell okay so this way or some antibody dependent cells so what will happen these type of cells okay this type of chemicals modifiers or particles proteins they are injected into the body which will activate the immune system such that they will recognize the abnormally growing cells and then kill those as they are behaving in an abnormal manner so that is known as immunotherapy now cancer it is spreading at a very fast rate okay because we are exposed to so many radiations now so many chemicals we are exposed now now the best is we should always think of preventing it how can we prevent by maintaining our weight following a proper diet carrying out proper physical activity we should try to be healthy way throughout the life we should be uh, choosing a good diet avoiding preservatives or processed food and also go on with lot of physical activity 
if we keep ourselves healthy if we keep our cells healthy then if like we are not exposed to the carcinogens even if we are exposed certain carcinogens we cannot avoid whatever it's being uh, the environment is having we cannot avoid that but if we can maintain a healthy weight if we maintain a good diet with physical activity definitely we will be able to prevent cancer in our life thank you